<laughs> they said it couldn't be done. Or maybe they said it shouldn't be done. I don't remember. I wasn't really paying attention. In either case, I did it anyway. For my online course, Robotic Drives and Physics, in my series of courses I call Robotics Learned by Building, I experimented with hardware hacking of a standard brushless DC motor. We basically converted it into an AC servo motor, which is a common drive motor used in robotics and automated industrial machines. The reasons for which are going to become evident shortly. Using this El Cheapo brushless DC motor, a three-phase H-bridge and an Arduino Uno, we are going to convert the motor into a speed-controlled or position-controlled motor, jumping from 18 steps per rotation to 768 different positions. And with the 40 to 1 gear drive built into the motor, we will have a potential 30,720 different positions that we can turn the motor to. And using this timing belt strap drive, we can move a load to within one one thousandth of a millimeter. Sound impossible? Let's explore how this works in this science short. To start with, well, let's explain what a brushless DC motor is. You may have come across them as they are whoa, quite common on quadcopters and drones as they are a very efficient electric motor. They do not have brushes. So in similar fashion to a stepper motor, you have a circle of windings on the stator and the rotor has a permanent magnet. You need to energize the windings in sequence so that each winding generates a magnetic field, pulling the rotor around step by step to rotate it. On this particular motor that I'm using, uh, I get these in bulk for the kit I sell for my robotic drives and physics course. You can get these motors for like under five bucks. It is an outrunner style. And by that, I mean the permanent magnet and rotor are on the outside of the stator coils, as opposed to an in-runner, which has the permanent magnet uh, rotor inside the circle of stator windings. Now, normally, brushless DC motors are used for precision speed control. While they operate similar to a stepper motor, stepper motors are designed to hold a position and they usually have dozens to hundreds of different positions per rotation. Brushless DC motors can hold a static position, but do not have that many positions to begin with. In this motor, you can see there's nine windings in total, so three sets of three phases. Because you energize two windings at once, there are two steps you take per phase. So to use the motor to hold position, you only have 18 different positions per rotation to choose from. The motors are specifically designed for speed control because you control how fast you sequence through the phases, thus controlling the rotational speed of the motor. The windings are wired internally in a Y configuration. So you energize the windings by applying a positive voltage to one winding and a negative to another. The two windings produce magnetic fields pulling on the permanent magnet of the rotor, which will balance itself between the windings because it can't line up with both phases at once. Having three phases allows us to control which direction it rotates. Now we switch and remove power from this phase and apply the negative voltage to this phase. So the rotor rotates to this position. We now pull the positive wire from this phase and apply it to this one, and thus the rota rotor rotates a little further, and so on, and so on. By energizing it in this sequence, it will rotate the motor. There are six different steps it takes as it moves through all three phases. So when you map out the voltages on each step, this is what it looks like. 
The disadvantage of brushless DC motors is they require complex electronic drive circuits. On drones, these are usually done uh, with electronic speed controllers. But what would happen if we replaced our DC voltages with AC waveforms? Notice it looks exactly like three-phase AC waveforms. And that's because that's exactly what you have. So replacing the DC waves with AC waves, look at the ridiculous number of huge benefits. We have strict control over the rotational speed by changing the frequency of the AC waves, exactly like standard AC motors. Effectively, it's a frequency drive. We can stop anywhere along the waves and by holding whatever voltage is on the phases already, we wind up stopping and holding the rotor of the motor. Say we stop it right here. We've got about two thirds negative voltage on the U phase, full positive voltage on the V phase, and about two thirds negative voltage on the W phase. So all three phases are producing magnetic fields and the rotor's permanent magnet will balance itself to line up its magnetic field with the stator's magnetic fields. By changing the voltages on the phases in sequence, we can reverse the rotational direction of the motor. Because we are dealing with analog waves, we essentially have infinitely variable bi-directional speed control. We can slow it down, stop and hold a position, reverse it to back up a little bit and hold it in another position. The benefits are huge, and all we did was change how we drove the motor. This is what is called an AC servo drive, although technically to be a servo, it would have to be closed loop feedback of some kind, so the controller knows the position and speed of the motor. But as you'll see, I didn't even change the electronics. I used the same three-phase H-bridge, used the same Arduino Uno controller. The only thing I changed was the program in the Arduino, which changed how I sent the power to the motor. So in this demonstration, I'm simply going to run it open loop with no feedback, and you'll see it's still astonishingly accurate in position repeatability. Brushless DC motors and brushless AC motors are virtually identical in construction. Almost all AC servo drives are in runner style brushless motors with a permanent magnet rotor on the inside of the windings, of the inside of the stator windings. But the stator windings are also wound in what is called a sinusoidal winding method. Brushless DC motor windings have one winding wrapped around the soft iron teeth, which focus the magnetic field. Brushless AC motors actually have the windings wrapped around two soft teeth adjacent to each other. This spreads out the magnetic field so they're wider, for lack of a better word. But brushless AC servo drives are expensive and brushless DC motors are very common and cheap we're going to simply hardware hack a brushless DC motor into an AC drive. So I divided up the AC waves into 256 different intervals. So I have a series of 256 voltages that I cycle through to each phase. This gives me 256 different incremental steps for every rotation through the three phases instead of the six steps I had previously. And because this particular motor has three sets of phases, to complete a rotation, it has to go through the, the AC phases three times. So that's 256 steps times three sets of phases equals 768 individual discrete steps per rotation that I can choose from. Because this particular motor also happens to have a 40 to one planetary gear drive built in, I can now theoretically turn the output shaft to 30,720 different positions. That's 768 
individual positions on the rotor multiplied by a 40 times gear drive. Slapping a timing belt pulley on the output shaft with a 12 millimeter diameter, the circumference of the drive pulley is 12 times pi or 3.141, which equals 37.692 millimeters of belt travel every time the pulley does a complete rotation. So 37.692 millimeters divided up into 30,720 steps per rotation gives us 0.00122 millimeters per position or 1.22 microns. To give you an idea of scale, the human red blood cell is typically about five microns in diameter. We obtained ridiculous accuracies only because I changed how I sent the electricity to the same motor with the same electronics. So I made a contraption. It's very flimsy, frankly, but it'll give us an idea of how accurate this flimsy El Cheapo system can be. And you can hopefully quickly see how useful this could be in home robotics or constructing your own tactical industrial machinery where you need fine positional movement and you can do it on the cheap. So how can we send three different AC waves to this motor? Well, the Arduino Uno has six pulse width modulated outputs. If you don't know what pulse width modulation is, I cover that in detail in course number one of my Robotics Learn by Building series of online courses. In fact, in that course, you build a PWM circuit and use it to control the speed of a DC motor or the brightness of a light, etc. PWM is very useful in a number of ways, including simulating an AC waveform. In short, with PWM, you send out a voltage pulse train, but you change how long the pulse stays positive. If it's a 10 volt pulse, but the pulse only stays high for 10% of the time, then the average voltage is only 10% of 10 volts or one volt. By increasing the time the pulse stays high, I can change the average voltage. The pulse staying high 50% of the time means the average voltage is 5 volts. The pulse staying high 100% of the time means the average output voltage, voltage is 10 volts. Pretty simple, right? A common technique used today is pulse width modulated AC, or PWM AC for short. I did a lesson on this in my Robotic Drives and Physics course, and that lesson is available for free. Here's the link, and that link will be provided in the description as well. So in that lesson, we simply go through the waveform and break it up into chunks. Say here, I break it up into 20 pieces. That's 10 intervals per half wave. I only need to focus on a quarter wave because the second quarter of the wave is just a mirror of the first quarter. And the negative half of the wave is a mirror of the positive half. I now send a pulse train out at a set frequency, but I'm continuously changing the pulse width to imitate the voltage at that particular point in the AC wave. It's that average voltage thing again. The Arduino Uno has six different PWM outputs, which is a good thing because I need six. Each of the three phases for the motor has a transistor going to positive and a transistor going to negative to perform the high speed switching. We need to be able to send out a different PWM signal to all six transistors at the same time. The Arduino PWM outputs have 256 different pulse widths to choose from. You send out a number between zero and 256. Zero for 0% duty cycle, or 256 for 100% duty cycle. I drive the transistors using these PWM signals and the transistors drive the motor. All of this figuring out duty cycles and how many divisions per wave you wanna make and all that is really complex math and I'd have to drink like five energy shots before attempting it. However, one of the students in my course is the awesome, the amazing Ben Taylor made this spreadsheet of madness, which performs all of the math for you. And in his awesomeness, he made the spreadsheet 
open access. In other words, he made it freely available and you can download it for free from the link in the free PWM AC lesson that I mentioned earlier. In there, you can see he's got the waveforms drawn out all pretty for you. It will perform the calculations for three phase AC. So you can even make a three phase inverter if you want it. So here you tell it how many times you want to divide up the wave, the resolution in effect. I chose 256 because I wanted a maximum resolution or a maximum number of positions on the rotor. You can set the maximum PWM value here. So if you're using a different microcontroller that has say uh, 10 bit PWM values, you can put 1024 in there, whatever the number the microcontroller wants as the maximum PWM value. Once you've entered in those numbers, it's magic. The spreadsheet of madness performs all the calculations and you can literally copy and paste all of these numbers into your Arduino sketch, which is exactly what I did. So here's the sketch I used to drive the motor and I threw all these numbers into an array with three rows, one row for each phase. If all of this is Martian language written in Egyptian hieroglyphics to you, then you should consider enrolling in my online course on digital electronics. We learn all about digital controls, including microcontrollers like the Arduino. But all I'm doing in my program is I go one at a time and fetch the first number from each row and send that number out on the PWM pin that's connected to each of the transistors. So here you can see the very first step is the U phase is, is, has barely any voltage, while the V phase is almost full positive voltage, and the W phase is almost full negative voltage. And you can see the numbers change as you go down the line, sending out a simulated AC wave to all three phases on the motor. The rest of my sketch simply runs the motor through a series of back and forth movements to different positions, and this is just to check the repeatability. Repeatability is actually more important in robotics than accuracy because chances are that when you are programming the robot, you're gonna haul out the teach pendant and drive the robot to its positions and record the positions. You want the robot to go to that position every single time. It needs to be repeatable. So on my contraption, I used a digital caliper which has 0.1 millimeter accuracy. I'll simply move it out then back a bit, then back out, then back to where it started from to see how close we can get back to the starting position. Now, this brushless motor is already notoriously slow and even more so trying to drive it with AC waves because the Arduino and the pulses have to cycle through all 256 numbers, right? But you can see how slow and incredibly smooth the motor's rotor is turning here and that's because it's taking hundreds of minute steps, 768 per rotation to be precise. Okay, so it just finished the cycle and ended at 29.5 millimeters. So I'll just hit the reset button on the Arduino so it runs through the program again, and the output shaft is so slow that it's hard to see the movement, and it's boring. So let's speed up the video. It moves out. I had it moving out 90 loops, then back 50, then out 40, and then finally 80 loops through the array, back to where it hopefully started. Uh, let's see how close it gets. 29.5 millimeters, bang on the money. And notice, if you listen carefully, you can hear the whining of the PWM. It's actually holding position right now. I'm trying to turn it with a substantial force. 
and it's holding quite well. Now notice this is just an El Cheapo brushless motor and you can see there's quite a bit of play. Backlash in the gears. The calipers are actually not very well anchored either. So there's a lot of play in this system and yet it's still able to return back to within 0.1 millimeters of where it started and that's without any feedback whatsoever. Ooh, another quick hardware hacker tip. A lot of these El Cheapo digital calipers actually have a little door on the back and there's four connections. It's a serial port and you can actually read the calipers through serial communication with your Arduino. Now you have El Cheapo instant high precision position sensors for your home built robot. Okay. I hope you enjoyed that and hope you try experimenting with this on your own. If this interests you, but a lot of this was you know, over your head, then please take a perusal of my online course series, Robotics Learn by Building on jetpackacademy.com, where we start from zero knowledge and work our way through basic electricity and analog electronics, even exploring bionics. We then move on to digital electronics where we essentially use computers on a microchip like the Arduino. And you get to do all kinds of cool stuff with them. Then we move on to robotic drives and physics, which is what this science short dealt with today. How do you get your robot to move? How do you control where it moves to or how fast? In course four, we learned some prototyping skills so you can build your own robots from scratch at home and you build a 3D printer using your newfound skills in the previous three courses. In course five, we learn autonomous robotics or robots that are on their own. Self-guidance and navigation, uh, obstacle avoidance, and common robotics competitions, as well as things like artificial intelligence and that fine line between smart robots making decisions or diving into their onboard bank of pre-made decisions. <laughs> You can take a tour of the courses with many lessons available for free preview so you can see for yourself why over 17,000 people from over 140 different countries around the world have enrolled. Please do take a moment to like and subscribe, of course. Or don't. I don't care. But it will help you stay tuned for other science shorts where we will be exploring all things science and tech, alternative energy and power generation, uh, refrigeration from waste heat, DNA extraction and amplification, you name it. Chances are we'll touch on it. And you can also visit the techvalleysciencecenter.com website to look for workshops that I might be holding in your area. Just note the Canadian spelling of center in that domain name. Thanks for watching and have a great day.